This is a paid promotion by Paradox Interactive because although my videos are free, food is not. And if I'm gonna sell out my incredibly tight, glutey, artistic, and comedic talent, I might as well do it for something I actually like more than morning donuts. Mmm. Morning donuts. Download link in the description. Sometimes game night doesn't happen because of scheduling issues. Like maybe you forgot your dice, or maybe your dog ate all your rule books, or maybe all your friends were busy, or you don't have any dice or books or friends or any money to buy any of those things, but you still want to be able to play a tabletop role-playing game anyway. Or at least an accurate virtual simulation of what it's like to have dice, books, and friends to play a tabletop role-playing game with while you cry on the toilet over your lack of them in the real world. Too dark? Possibly, but I can't hear all those tears over the sound of all this loot and experience I'm getting from all the troglodytes I've just slaughtered. Welcome to a crap guide to nights of pen and paper too. After kicking out that guy that everybody hates who brings his overpowered character that's totally legit you guys, his previous dungeon master signed off on it, you put together a team of 100% accurate customizable players with a variety of characters, races, and classes, except for the best one, but bards are so powerful that it's understandable the devs wouldn't want to break their game with the sheer amount of stonky charismatic powers it would bring. Four characters, you can choose unlikely nerds such as Afro Science Man, Jack Black, some dork whose favorite RPG is that one you've never heard of, but is obviously way more intelligent and complex than the one you're playing, you filthy peasant. Dude bro, aquatic dude bro, and even a big dice goth GF. And the best part is you can give every single one of them dwarfy beards. For classes, you've got your usual suspects, magic user, physical bruiser, specific designated role confuser, and they even play accurately to their real world counterparts. Like how my mage is only useful half of the time and how my party's rogue runs for the treasure first and then dies. In fact, there's a lot of nods to classic and modern tabletop RPGs that you'll pick up on if you ever touch a die that has more than six sides. For example, you spend a majority of the time emotionlessly killing things that are minding their own business, said things spontaneously always turn into gold for some reason, the paladin can never find a weapon that they want while the rest of the party is rolling in and loot, and bees are the ultimate enemy of all life that will absolutely turn you into a pile of dice and mush if you try to fight it at level 3, like the dungeon master advised you not to do. Hey, stop poking fun at RPG tropes, that's my job. Now obviously, mobile games have a bit of a reputation for eating your wallet and a few of your neighbor's cats, but one bright side is that you've got another hand free, so you can maybe do some taxes, eat a sandwich, or play a second download of Knights of Pen and Paper 2 simultaneously because it means twice the virtual gaming groups to fill that lonely void in your sad schedule that even buying a fifth or sixth sword and shield won't be able to satisfy. Am I projecting a little bit? No, I'm projecting a whole lot, and I'm only a little bit salty because I had to take a loan out to pay the bridge troll his bridge toll. This is why everybody thinks ogres are cooler than you, stupid algae skin piece of shit. And now you know how to play Knights of Pen and Paper 2, free to download on iOS and Android app stores. Link in the description below, you're welcome. <laughs>